get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country. We hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Vegas, more. I know we were there, uh, Carrie and LA in Vegas at the same time, but we didn't see each other, unfortunately. Um, If you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, go to rise25.com, contact us, find out where our next event is going to be. And today I'm very excited. We have the co-founders of Safe Sleeve, Carrie Subal and Alay Kumar, who are both industrial engineers from Cal Poly. Safe Sleeve is a manufacturer of radiation blocking laptop and phone cases and accessories. Uh, their distribution includes major retailers in the U.S. on Amazon, Walmart.com, Jet.com, along with Safe Sleeve's website and distributors in Europe, Australia, and Singapore. Carrie and Alay, thanks for joining me. What's been the lowest moment uh, in the business? And then on the flip side, what's been the proudest moment or milestone? So lowest moment, the first thing that came to mind is not one moment, but the multiple sleepless nights for things like, and I'm not talking about sitting there, you know, coding or setting up an ad campaign. I'm talking about um, you know, using your your customer's money or using a loan from family and friends to place an order of in, an inventory order and knowing that it's with a new factory and ultimately you're depending on, you know, you're just trusting that they're going to get you the goods because you pay for it all up front before you have anything in hand. Um, so that's more of a stressful side of it. Low moment, I'd say for me, just kind of spiritually, philosophically as an entrepreneur, um, I think everyone's going to face that moment of like, am I in the right place? Should I keep going down this path and full steam ahead? Or should I go get a job? Should I suck it up? Even though that's not what I wanted to do. I never envisioned myself going to work for someone else. Um, should I, you're like, I could work, uh, 35 hours, have weekends off. Um, paid vacation, or I could work a hundred hours or more, and yeah, right. not get paid vacation, not get paid sometimes. Yep. I mean, exactly. you could tell I've never thought about this before, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any entrepreneur has, right? Yeah. So, so what I'd do you tell yourself? Yeah. What do you tell yourself in that in that moment where you're like, oh my god, just the journey may be. It, maybe easier, not not more fruitful, but maybe easier on the flip side, what do you tell yourself? You know, I try to flip the how I frame it. I try to reframe it like 180 degrees and basically think of the downside of taking that other path. The mm-hmm. downside of where am I gonna be in 10 years if I do go away from my dream and I choose to you know, do a U-turn and, and go the other way. Um, and that the fear of you know being ten years down the line and saying like I never went for it is what just yeah. drives me to keep pushing full steam ahead and you know just trust my gut and keep going with it. Um, I'd rather I'd rather live you know maybe not the successful life that I envision or the you know um, whatever it is that I end up envisioning, but I I rather live the life of trying to achieve that than not trying at all. Totally. Um, what about on the flip side, and then uh, Lay will get to you. What about on the proudest moment or milestone that you remember that you hit that you were ecstatic about? Um, it's probably when we hit our first kind of, you know, our first day on 
when I'm, I'm watching sales through Shopify and through Amazon and, and we do a new marketing campaign, we launch a new product. Um, and okay, so specifically when we launched our detachable cases and you know, again, sleepless nights went into, we wanted to do this thing right from the get go and apply everything we've learned from every other product and you know, hit the detachable and hit it hard. Um, and the day we launched, we reached, uh, we probably exceeded our previous high for sales in a day by three times. Huh. And that was counting the previous Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which is always going to be our biggest day. Um, that's probably the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and then it's, it's honestly just every day. I, I don't want to sound too corny, but like <laughs> it's every day that I can come to the office and Alay and I are working side by side. Like we worked you know, remotely with each other when he was working a full-time job. Um, and now we can come to our office and our warehouse and we have all of our product in our warehouse and we're working side by side and we have, you know, we have some awesome help. Um, and so it's, it's really every day I come to the office and realize yeah. that. If you continue to grow, what do you think your next hire will be? We actually just thought Yeah, probably something design on the creative side. Um, so I'm surprised to hear that. Hire, Why? What's up? I'm surprised to hear that actually. Well, so our most recent hire um, has been knocking it out of the park in terms of operations. Everything operations related, that's what she loves and she does it super well. And that was always our first, you know, our first hire would have been that and it was. Um, now that we have that in place, I think the next one would be the creative side. And the reason why is that's curious. So we, again, bootstrap, you know, smaller companies, you're going to uh, outsource a lot of work. And and when you do that, sometimes you hit home runs, sometimes it's not so great. And then you spend a lot of time finding, you know, for one project, someone might work well, but the next time you have a next project, you might not yeah. find the same person. They may not be available anymore, so you have to... Find exactly. Else. So for us, it's you know we always have an idea and vision of what we want. We just need someone to create it. But now bringing that that resource in house, where it's like we could just throw our ideas and keep pumping them out, um, it's going to allow us to move a lot faster. Yeah. So, so you guys are the idea think, people, and you kind of hand it off to to that person. Exactly. I think part of that is we're kind of a sucker. I know myself at least, but I think I speak for late too. Like we're a sucker for the aesthetics, and like so something you know you don't think of it necessarily, but this direct to customer retail packaging that we designed. Yeah. Um, every little, you know, subtle feature, we wanted the unboxing experience to be, um, you know, an impactful experience that matches the quality of our products. Yeah. So something like that is a project. And, yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of meshing the, the engineering with the design, get someone in there to, to be more hands-on with the design. I would just throw it in like a poly bag, like here. You guys have this nice well, case. Right, like... and, that's, and that's kind of what, going back to the very beginning and we're thinking about, you know, safe sleeve and, and what we wanted to create, that was very much a part of it. You know, we wanted a product that was absolutely superior when it came to the protection uh, functionality, right. but, it came, but it also came with additional features, additional um, capabilities that these other products didn't offer, and then it also had a aesthetic feel to totally. the packaging, the lifestyle, the whole the whole package. Yeah, totally. So a lay, yeah. The, sorry, that, that's and you know because we do digital marketing, you constantly need new graphics and images, and um, you're running different ads and setting up you know new pages and making changes to the website. So there's a lot of design involved there. Totally. Uh, Alay, what about you? Low point. And then proud moment. Uh, low point, um, I would say, it was probably during um, one of the two uh, crowdsourcing campaigns where mm. Carrie was mentioning we kind of uh, squeaked by at the last minute. I was like, you know, you put all this because it's a lot of work up front, right? Mm. Do a whole lot of work up front, and then you hit go, and you just hope that everything kind of just fires and works. And you're still doing stuff as it's going. Um, but then we made it through, and it was it was great. And then, uh, proudest moment would be uh, probably this past year. Everyone, every business has a particular you know milestone. Um, and you know we do this every year. We create a the beginning of the year, the end of the year, we create a plan for the next year. And uh, and this year's 
milestone, or sorry, last year's milestone was a particularly, um, let's say, important one for me. And uh, we we exceeded that milestone last year. And that was that was a moment for me where it was uh, I was uh, very very uh, proud of that. That was like a sales a revenue number, right? It was a revenue number. Yeah. yeah. What are some things that people should look out for challenges um, of having co-founders, right? Because some people run the company, some people have two co-founders. You know, I see, like you were saying, there's an advantage, right? But then there's other challenges. The advantage, you know, like you may be having a low moment, Carrie, and then like you may be like, you know what, you may be at just pumping and, and having a lot of energy and kind of taking that person up, right? Kind of like a workout partner. What are some of the challenges people should look out for navigating with with a co-founder? I figure I could ask that because you're both to get together. So, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I will say it's, it's funny. It's actually something that I read this article way back when, when Carrie and I were working remotely and uh, it talked about how... Uh, you know, your business partner is like your significant other. Totally, yeah. And I told Carrie this, and we, we you know, we laughed about it. Uh, but it's, it's very much true. It's, you know, even in a significant other, you, you want someone, there's going to be peaks and valleys. And, you know, the, the understanding is, you know, you pull them up when they're down, and they pull you up when you're down. And you it's a yin-yang thing. And I think that very much works for Carrie and myself. Uh, but, you know, going as far as... Uh, yeah. Like, what do you tend to disagree on? What do we disagree on? Yeah. Man, he's been doing this for so long, and I agree with Alea 100%, and I actually knew that he was going to say that before he said <laughs> it, which also speaks to our partnership. Um, but I think we've gotten to the point where we just understand each other so well that, like, <laughs> like if you are, we might disagree on things, but yeah. if you already know how the other person's going to... Well, that's what I mean. You may know ahead of time, I'm going to bring this up, Alea is going to shut it down because he doesn't like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What do you know that you will disagree? I mean, you'll you'll work through it, but what do you know you'll actually not agree on something, and you'll have to kind of argue. You both have to argue mm-hmm. with each other, in, not in like a a nasty way, but. I mean, the one that I could think of, and this has—I don't know if this has really happened recently, but uh, is eighty twenty rule. The perfectionist will come out and say. You know, one of us is like ready to go. Let's just move forward. Let's get it out there. We'll work out the kinks after his launch. Just go. Um, one of us will be like, well, hold on. Have we have we crossed our T's, dotted the I's? Have we checked everything we possibly can before we letting you know go out the door? That that conversation has gotten. I would even say mm-hmm. probably heated. At, at, is at one of you more like which which one of you is more the perfectionist, and which one of you is more let's just go? So. I'm going to let Carrie ask <laughs> Well, I consider myself a perfectionist, which is the funny part. But in our partnership, I don't know if this just means LA is like too much of a perfectionist or what, but it's more so, I'd say more so I'm more like ready, fire, yeah. aim. Yeah. Whereas LA is a little bit more calculated. But then again, there are examples where it's the opposite. It's so the opposite. I think we just have our, if I can think of a specific example. Your moment. Um. Can you think of any specific examples? Like, detachable case. I think we're both on the same page. Let's just go for it. I can think of... Uh, so, you always try to hit... You always try to hit a mark. Um, so, let's say, it's, you know, we release uh, cases for Apple products. And, you know, Apple leaks information. Or they do, or someone else does, about suspicions as far as what the next product is going to be and there was a particular time and I think it was during our Kickstarter campaign where we were going to li- release we were trying to hit the mark for a product that Apple was just about to release right um, they announced it but as far as specifications it wasn't necessarily out yet and we uh, I think I was more gung-ho on the hey well let's just go for it um, it was like probably one of the few times where I was like let's just go for it order more and just get it out there and Carrie was like well, what what because it wasn't a supplier I think at the time too and we didn't know. We hadn't even seen a sample, I don't think, of the case. So. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's, it's things like that. I think the reason why it works is, as Kerry was mentioning, there's times where it flops. One of us will be more conservative, one of us will be more gung-ho. Right. And it works out well because, you know, typically the person that's more gung-ho has been maybe more involved um, in whatever that project is, whatever that, whatever that thing is, and the other person isn't. But the good thing is, because they haven't been as involved and they're more removed, they have they sometimes, the majority of the time, bring up good questions and good points where 
it's like, okay, you know what, if we actually, these are two things that we did overlook, but if we get that in now, then, you know, we are ready for, like, an 80-20 rule just to push out and go for it. Totally. That's true. I think, I think it comes down to, like, the fallacy of sunken costs, I think it's called, where basically you've, you've already invested so much in it, so if it's your baby, it's your project, you're, you know, for example, like, if I'm, I'm working on something like a new packaging design, and Alay's not involved in it at all, um, and then I say, hey, here it is, like, we're going to get them printed, and um, I just want to, I've, I've been so in the weeds with this thing that I know it's perfect, and I know it's ready, and then he looks, and he's like, well, what about this, this, and that, and uh, I think that goes both ways to Alay's point, right. just, if you're the one that's in it, you're going to, you, you don't want to hear any feedback, yeah. you feel like you thought of everything, but that can be a good thing. Totally. No, I, I ask that because it is like a marriage and um, it's it's not necessarily always an easy road to navigate. You know, you have to talk about the decision making and everything like that. So, yeah, I appreciate you sharing some of the uh, ways you navigate that. But I want to thank you guys both. This has been awesome. I want everyone to go and check out safesleevecases.com. Anywhere else we should point people online uh, besides the website just our social channels you can follow us on facebook at safe sleeve and instagram at safe sleeve as well cool check them out so you don't get radiated by your phones your tablets your laptops and your kids don't either and uh i appreciate it guys thank you you know what i just thought of jeremy yeah. sorry uh um, we'll throw up a discount code too for anyone listening and we'll make it rise 25 right behind you and okay it'll be 25 so yeah, so Rise 25, 25% off, very generous of you, and put that, whoever's doing the show notes of this, put the Rise 25 code on that page so people can, uh, can grab it. So thanks, guys. All right, thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand